The trouble with old steam locomotives. Part 8, working on the speedy, fitting a new gasket and clearing blockages. And the first thing to do is to make sure it still runs. And thankfully it does. I left this engine for a few days to make sure that the piston in the cylinder and the piston valve hadn't seized up again and thankfully they hadn't as you've just seen the engine runs okay. I'm removing the cylinder cover that's only held in with a few bolts because first of all I need to clean it up because someone used the dreaded silicone rubber on it and I don't want any of this stuff kicking about in the engine cylinders. Silicone rubber is just what you need to block up the drain cocks. And once the drain cocks are blocked then you have a problem. When you finish steaming there's water in the cylinders it can't get anywhere so what does it do? It just stays in there causes severe rusting of the parts and then the next time you get the engine out it won't go. Once I cleaned up the cylinder cover it was time to make the gasket. Normally I would take an imprint of the cylinder on my ink pad and transfer that to the gasket material but for this job I'm using a compass because I can't get the ink pad into the right position near the cylinder because it's still fastened to the engine. Setting the compass was very straightforward. The point of the compass went into one of the engraved slots on the ruler. And the pencil part of the compass also fitted into one of the engraved slots, so I got a very accurate positioning. The machine register on the cylinder cover itself is 1 and 9 16 of an inch. And the pencil line on the gasket paper is now also 1 and 9 16 of an inch in diameter. Because this is a large gasket, I didn't bother with a craft knife. I just stuck the scissors into the middle of it and slowly cut it out. Then I finished it to the correct dimension using a flapper wheel in my Proxon motor tool. The gasket needs to be an easy fit, not a tight fit on the machine register. In a small gasket, I would drill the holes before cutting out the gasket. But on this one, I'm actually drawing around it and cutting it out, using my very old, very rusty, but still very sharp scissors. I don't think they make them like this anymore. Here's the gasket after I cut it out with the scissors. Now I'm using a spring clamp to hold the gasket to the cylinder cover. Because I'm going to drill holes through the gasket using my Proxon motor tool with a small drill and I'm not drilling straight onto the bench, I've put a piece of wood underneath it. In no time at all I'd drilled every one of the holes. When I normally make gaskets I don't bother too much about the outside because I can trim it off afterwards with a craft knife. But when this cylinder cover's refitted to the cylinder some parts are difficult to get to. So holding the gasket firmly in place I trimmed it off with the scissors first. Here's a shot of the engine cylinder and it still needs cleaning up. But before I fit the cylinder cover I do need to do something else. Why did the cylinder and the piston valve rust up so badly? At this point I should really say thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful and leave the episode with a cliffhanger. But no, instead I will tell you what my theory is as to why the cylinder and piston valve rusted up. The reason is that the water could not get out of the cylinder after the last run. Here I'm checking out the drain cocks using a very small drill bit and both of them are extremely blocked. So blocked in fact I'm going to have to drill the residue out using this drill bit hopefully without breaking it off. I'm not going to use a power tool for this, this is a pin vise and I've fitted the small drill bit into the pin vise and now if I can get it in the right place I'm going to slowly drill my way through the blockage. Most important if you're doing this make sure the drain cocks are actually open. And as you can see in this clip, the small drill bit comes through and there's quite a lot of rubbish in there. Lesson 1 when running a small locomotive. After every run, you need to make sure that there isn't any water left in the cylinders. So all you do is open the drain cocks and run the engine up and down the track and all the water's blown out and leave the drain cocks open while you store the engine. I've always done this with every locomotive I've ever had and I can safely say that I've never ever had this problem that I'm seeing with this locomotive. Cleaning out the drain cocks should be a regular service item. You can generally see whether they're working or not when you're running the locomotive. And if ever you see that nothing's coming out of a drain cock, then you need to do what I'm doing. This is a very small drill, by the way. It's about, I don't know, one millimeter or maybe less. I'm not trying to enlarge the hole in the drain cock, just clean it out. After I finished cleaning out the drain cocks, I cleaned around the inside of the cylinder and here, complete with its gasket, is a refitted cylinder cover. Unfortunately though, there is some silicone rubber still sticking to some of the bolt heads, but my brass wire brush makes short work of that. 
Time to run the engine and make sure the drain cocks are working. And yes, I'm pleased to say the drain cocks are working fine. To check the drain cocks on the other side, I had to move the engine off the bench onto the bigger bench and then put it back again. And the back drain cock was blocked, but the front one was OK. That's not a good enough test for the drain cocks. What I'm doing at the moment is injecting some oil into the cylinder, quite a lot of oil. This is ordinary lubricating oil. And it's in an oil can that I use for getting to inaccessible places. The engine definitely didn't like having so much lubricating oil in the cylinder. The main thing is though, with the drain cocks open, the oil is coming out of the cylinder and it's a very dirty black colour. And the more I ran the engine, the dirtier it got. It's running a bit jerkily because I've got it notched up one notch on the reverser. When I pull the reversing lever fully into reverse, everything evens out. The amount of oil is dwindling now, and it's much dirtier than it was to start with. This is a simple job that could have been made a whole lot worse had the twist drill have broken off in the drain cock. But I'm not even going to think about that. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.